70-742 Lesson 2 Lab 2 Creating and Managing Active Directory Users and Computers So let's just jump into it here. We're going to have a number of exercises and we're only going to be working with your DC1. So our first exercise is exercise 2.1 Creating a Single User and Active Directory Users and Computers. So understand a user account is used by Windows to determine what changes can be made to the computer, which files and folders you have access to, which user preferences you might have, such as your choice of desktop wallpaper, color schemes, drive mappings, screensavers. There are standard accounts used to perform daily tasks on the computer that are limited in what they can do, as well as administrative accounts that provide full control over the computer. Remember from your learning, it is it is an unsafe practice to be logging on with administrative privileges unless you specifically have something that you need to do. There's no reason that you need to do this. You can log in with a standard user account and then run the process with administrati administrative privileges. So let's jump into it. We're going to go to our LUN DC1 console and get logged in here. So the first thing we're going to do, is, once our server manager comes up here, is we're going to be going to our tools and then to Active Directory Users and Computers. Now we're going to select the Sales OU, and in the Sales OU, we're going to right click and we're going to choose new user now you did this when you were setting up your lab environment we're going to do it again in the exercise so first name is going to be Lori last name is Kane for the user logon we're going to do a little bit different format we're going to do Lori.Kane there's a number of different types of naming conventions that you can use. Make sure that however you begin a naming convention for a network, you follow through and continue. Don't change in the middle. But for our exercise, this is an example of a different type of uh, user logon name that you can uh, define. So let's go back for one second here. Okay, so the user logon name is Lori.Kane under datum.com. In the pre windows, let's change that. We're going to make it L Kane. Okay, so it should read L Kane for the pre Windows 2000 logon name. We click next. We're going to set our password up, our default password. We're going to clear the user must change password at next logon and select never expires because we're working in our test environment. We're going to click next and then finish. So you just created your first user account in your lab. Go ahead and take a screenshot and paste that into step number 12. Now let's right click the Lori Kane account and go to properties. And we're going to select on the general tab we're going to select a telephone number and we're going to put in a fictitious number of 123-123-1234 we're going to select the address tab and we're going to give Lori an address of 1234 Main Street in the city is going to be London. The state is going to be CA for California and the zip code 44234. Let's click the organization tab. Oh, wait a minute, we need to set region. We're going to select United States and here's a here's a quick tip. If you want to get to United States real quick, just press the letter V. 
and right there we can select the United States rather than having to scroll through that whole list. Now click the organization tab and let's give her a job title sales department and the department she's in is going to be sales she's in the sales department I hope that's her department and for the company she's working for a datum dot a datum corporation now we're going to click in now we need to assign a manager so we're going to click the change button this is why we created a couple of those accounts in our lab let's type in start typing Lakeisha so it already knew I didn't have to type in I didn't have to check there was only one match and it automatically filled in Lakeisha Dennis Miss Dennis is going to be her manager go ahead and click OK now they tell us to click OK but they want you to take a screenshot uh, if you go ahead and click OK you're just going to have to go back into it so on the Lori Kane properties take a screenshot of your entire screen let's let's step back for a second if all you're doing is giving me a screenshot of Lori Kane properties that doesn't tell me what you're working on give me a screenshot of the entire desktop I want to see the name I want to see the URL give it give it all to me just screenshot the entire screen paste that in to step number 25 click OK to close the properties now what we're going to do is we're going to reset her passwords we're going to right click and we're going to choose reset password this is how you reset a user's password through the GUI and we're going to give her a new password of password 01 real secure and then we're going to click OK. Now I'm going to make a. I'm going to give you a comment about that. If I was doing that, and I was resetting the password, I would also check that the user must change password at next logon. This protects you, the administrator. Provide them a temporary password, but the first time they log in they are required to change it so that they and only they know what their password is okay exercise 2.1 is completed let's take a look at exercise 2.2 this is creating and using user templates so in some cases you need to create single users on a regular basis but the user accounts contain so many attributes that creating them individually becomes time-consuming to speed up the process of creating complex user objects you can use templates so let's go ahead and right-click on Lori Kane and we're going to select copy now it asks us hey what's the username what's the first name what's the full name so we're going to call this sales and for the last name is going to be template let's go ahead and in the user logon name we're going to call it sales template and go ahead and click next let's give it our default password and we're going to deselect the password never expires and we're going to select user must change password this is that security feature I was talking about you give it a default password but the first time that account gets used they have to set their own password I'm going to click next and we're going to click finish now let's go ahead and double click on the sales template now click on the account tab and 
what you're going to do is you're going to under the account options scroll down to you see account is disabled let's take a look right there check that okay so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply that we're gonna select the member of tab we're gonna click add and what we want to do is we want to add them to the sales group so let's see if it finds that it did it added them to the sales group member of sales let's go ahead and click OK to close the properties now we're gonna right click on sales template and we're gonna say copy and the sales user we're going to create is going to be James Thomas. For the user logon name, it's going to be first initial last name. I'm sorry, first name dot last name. Just used to using that other context. Now remember, usernames are not case sensitive, so you can put their first initial capitalized if you want it doesn't matter however the pre Windows 2000 name we want to make that J Thomas let's go ahead and click next and we're gonna give it our default password And you'll notice that it says the account's disabled. We're going to uncheck that. We're going to click Next. Here are your objects that are going to be how it's going to be created. It's going to copy from the sales template, the full name, the user logon name, and the fact that the user must change password at next logon. Go ahead and take a screenshot and paste that into step number 17. When you've got your screenshot, go ahead and click Finish. Okay, so let's double check, let's double click the James Tom Thomas account. Click on the member of. Already a member of these groups. So our question is which group is James Thomas a member of? Well, that user account is a member of both domain users and sales. So if you've got that question answered, go ahead and close your properties box. Exercise 2.2 is done. Exercise 2.3 is creating computer objects. So like user accounts, Windows computer accounts provide a means for authenticating and auditing the computer's access to a Windows network and its access to domain resources. Each Windows computer to which you want to grant access to resources must have a unique computer account. It can also be used for auditing purposes, specifying which system was used when something was accessed. We're going to go ahead and we're going to select the computers container in our Active Directory Users and Computers. Double click LUN-SVR1 select the operating system tab. Our question number three is which operating system and version does LUN-SVR1 have? Well it's Windows Server 2016 Standard Edition. What version? 10.0 parentheses 14.393. Select the member of tab. Question four is which group is LUN-SVR1 a member of? It's a member of domain computers. So we can go ahead and you've got those questions answered. Go ahead and close the properties dialog. Let's right click on our computers container and we're going to select new computer. And we're going to name it WKSTN1, like workstation 1. And under, let's see, and let's see, under user or group, right here, 
we're going to click change we're going to type in domain computers and click OK so we can see domain computers go ahead and click OK and there's our new object take a screenshot paste it into step 11 2.3 is done exercise 2.4 using Active Directory Administration Administrative Center Administrative Center beginning with Windows Server 2008 R2 in addition to using Active Directory users and computers administrators can manage their directory service objects by using the new Active Directory Administrative Center the Active Directory Administrative Center has a built-in Windows PowerShell command line interface and a rich graphical user interface. So on our LUN DC1, let's go ahead and close Active Directory Users and Computers. And what you're going to select is Tools, Active Directory Administrative Center. It's got a slightly different look. It's going to take a moment for it to start up. Let's maximize it. So in our Active Directory Administrative Center, let's select a datum local in the left hand pane. And then we're going to double click on computers in the center. And there's our computers. How many computer accounts are shown? Yeah, well, it should be three you've answered question 5. Let's go ahead and right click on WKSTN1 and select delete. Are you sure you want to? Yes. Delete. And just the same way as we created an account in ADUC, we can delete it here. Let's go ahead and let's right click in our white area here and select new computer and here's our computer dialog we're going to call it WKSTN10 Let's move this over so it fills the center of the screen so there's our name and we're simply going to click OK and there's our new computer account go ahead and take a screenshot paste it into step 6 All right, so in the left pane, let's go ahead and let's select the datum again. And in the right pane, let's see here, left pane, select the datum. And then in the right pane, double click Sales OU. Ah, here we are. Here's our Sales OU. Double click it. So we're going to right click and say New User. Here's our new user dialog. So in the first name, we're going to type in Monica. In the last name, we're going to go ahead and we're going to type in Brink. Now for the UPN name, we're going to specify Monica.Brink. Helps if I type her name correctly there we go Monica Brink and under the Sam account name we need to modify that to M Brink so I'm just going to click here and we're going to backspace and get rid of everything but M Brink all right we're going to type in our default password we're going to confirm that default password now we're going to scroll down to the member of section it's a lot of information here everything that we were doing with all those different tabs we can do here let's find it where is member of right here member of and we're going to 
search for sales. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. We, we have to click the add button to the right. So we're going to type in sales, press enter. There's our sales group. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click OK down here at the bottom. And we just created our new user account. And from one single pane of glass, so to speak, we were able to set all the settings for that account at one shot. A little bit more efficient because if you remember for Lori Kane we had to create the account and then once the account was created go back in and modify it to make, to decide what member they were a part of what groups they were a part of this did it all at one shot so let's go ahead and let's double click the Monica Brink account so here we can see all that information with it open let's go ahead let's go ahead and scroll back down to the member of section and take a screenshot showing that membership you're going to paste that into step number 16 so answer this question Besides the sales group, which other group was the user added to? Automatically added to, yes, domain users. So we're not going to make any changes, so we're just going to go ahead and click cancel to close the screen. Exercise 2.4 is done. Exercise 2.5 is configuring user rights. Now, in this exercise, we're going to use the Group Policy Editor to manage user rights assignments for the default domain controller policy. So, a user right authorizes a user to perform certain actions on a computer, such as logging onto a system interactively, or a user right authorizes a user to perform certain actions on a computer, such as logging onto a system interactively, or backing up files and directories on a system. User rights are assigned through local policies or Active Directory group policies. So we can go ahead, we can close the Active Directory Administrative Center. We're going to go to, go to Tools and then Group Policy Management. Let's go ahead and we're going to make this a little bit larger, make it a little bit easier to work with see what we're working with. I'm going to move the center divider over a little bit. I'm going to select the forest. I'm going to expand it. I'm going to expand the adatum.com, the domains, and then the adatum.com. And then I'm going to expand group policy objects. So you can see that we've only got two group policy objects to find. Now, what they want us to do is they want us to right-click the default domain controllers policy. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that and we're going to click at it. In our dialog here, understand that there's two different types of configurations that can be defined. User configurations, computer configurations. It depends on how you want to apply the particular policy you're working with. Under computer configuration, let's go ahead and expand, expand policies. We're going to expand window settings. Takes a moment. We're going to exp expand security settings. And then we're going to expand local policies. Now we've, there's two different options here, or three different options here. All the policy, user rights assignment, security options. We're going to select user rights assignments. Scroll down the list and just take a look at all the various options that are that are allowed or denied or possible here. There's a lot of different options. Huge thousands, literally thousands of different types of options for group policies. So our question number seven is which groups are assigned 
the allow log on locally user write. So here, allow log on locally. So let's double click on that. And here we are. Account operators, administrators, backup operators, enterprise domain controllers, print operators, server operators. These are all the groups that are allowed the local logon. Remember, you make your user and computer objects part of groups, and then you apply the policies to those groups. Otherwise, you would have to include every single account that you needed to be able to have log on here. Let's go ahead and click Cancel. And we're going to answer another question. Which user or groups have the deny logon local rate? Right here, deny logon locally. Well, it's not defined. That means that there's nothing configured. If we look, right, none. There is nothing there. So the answer to question eight is none. Question nine is which user or groups have the force shutdown from a remote system applied to it? Well, two different groups, administrators and server operators. That's your answer to question nine. Go ahead and click cancel. So let's take a look. Let's, let's double click on backup files and directory rights. Which user or groups have the backup files and directory rights? Well, there's your three groups. Go ahead and place those as your answer to question 10. Let's select, hey, where'd that go? There we are. Let's go ahead and select add or user or group. And let's see if this group, I don't know if this group exists or not. Key admins. Let's check names. Yes, it does. Look, there may be a new group you've never heard of. Go ahead and click OK and click OK. Now go ahead and take a screenshot, paste this into step number 10. Once you've got your screenshot, go ahead and click OK. Now, our next question is, which user or groups have the restore files and directory rights? So we got to scroll down till we see that. Restore files and directories. Double click on it, and we can see these three groups have the restore rights. So go ahead and place those three groups as your answer to question 12. If we look at question number 13, we need to double click shut down the system and take a look at what user or groups have the shut down the system right. There's your four groups that need to be included in your answer. Once you've got that, go ahead and you can click cancel or OK, it does the same thing. And go ahead and close your group policy management console. And that was the editor and now you can close group policy management. Once you've closed all the dialog windows, your group policy editor and the group policy management console, you have completed lab two. Thank you.